Hello, boys and girls. I'm feeling extra joyful today for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> what? Nah. <laughs> Look at my friend Lammy. Oh, oh nah. what's that there? Oh, thank you. Look at this beautiful pink rose that my friend Lammy just gave me. Happy Mother's Day, Pastor Tammy. That's right. Nah. It's Mother's Day, and that's probably why I'm feeling extra joyful today. Thank you, Lammy. Oh my, look at him. <laughs> Welcome to Kid Life. <laughs> Let's pray. Hello, my friends. Let's pray. Let's talk to God. God, you are amazing and wonderful and mighty, and thank you that we can call you Father. We thank you, Lord, that you care for us like that as your kids. And we just invite you into this time. We want to know you more. We want to hear your voice, God. And we want to be like you, Father. We want to be like you and reflect who you are to everybody around us, God, that they can see you in us. Father, let my friends feel your love and your presence and your big spiritual hug today. In Jesus' name, thank you for them. Amen. It's me, Eleanor, and welcome back to Transformed. We have had some truly incredible interviews in this series where we bring you face to face with people from the Bible who had personal encounters with Jesus. The last several times we've gotten together, we've talked to some amazing people. But today, we're talking to someone who could be considered a pretty bad person. He's a thief. It's true. Let's go ahead and jump right into my interview with him just the other day. I think you might be surprised by what he had to say. Hello there, Mr. Thief. Actually, Eleanor, my name is Mr. Smith, but you, you can call me Jesse. Well, Jesse, we love reading about the time when you and another thief were sentenced to die alongside Jesus on the cross. Tell us, what was that like? Actually, it was terrible. I had been a thief, a murderer and a horrible person. I actually deserved to die. So Thief and myself, we were hung on the cross on either side of Jesus. Oh, what did you do while you hung there? Did you talk to Jesus? Well, not really. I was in so much pain. I was all wrapped up with how much I was hurting. I wasn't paying attention to Jesus or the other thief. But then I heard the other thief screaming at Jesus, saying terrible things like, well, if you're really the son of God, why don't you save yourself? That is terrible. It's bad enough that Jesus had to die on the cross and then your friend had to hurl insults at him too? That is just evil. I know. He was yelling at Jesus and then I screamed at him and I told him to stop. I said, don't you yell at him. That's Jesus. We deserve to die, but he is innocent. That was very good of you, Jesse. Then what happened? Well, I turned to Jesus and I said, Lord, Master, remember me when you enter your kingdom today. I knew that he was going to prepare a place in heaven. I had heard about it. I knew that he was the savior of the world and I believed him. I wanted to be with him in that paradise forever. That's wonderful. What did Jesus say back to you? Well, I actually expected him to yell at me or ignore me or tell me that I didn't deserve it because I was a criminal and a thief. But he looked at me and he said, today I tell you the truth. You will be with me in paradise. Wow, so just like that, Jesus forgave you of all of your sins. That's right. He saved me just like that. He didn't care that I was a sinner or a thief or a criminal. It didn't matter what I had done. Jesus forgave me right on the spot. And then a little while later, I died. And Jesus had told me the truth. That day I was with him in paradise. That's wonderful. But wait, if you died, then how are you here with us? Don't ask me. I didn't set up this interview. I've been in heaven for 2000 years. So, if you don't mind, and if we're done here, I'd like to get going. You know, it's much more fun in heaven. No offense. Oh, none taken, Mr. Smith. Wow, what an incredible transformation. 
He was one of the meanest, most evilest people in the whole world. But Jesus forgave him of his sins and transformed him into a new person. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Tune in next time when I interview yet another person who was transformed by Jesus. Bye-bye. Hey there, cool cats. I'm Peggy Sue, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we're talking about forgiveness. So, every time someone asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. It's never too late to be forgiven. <sighs> it's definitely too late for me. Peggy, what's the matter? I've messed up and I'll never be forgiven now. <laughs> oh, Dolly, that's not true. It's never too late to be forgiven. <laughs> Are you sure? Super duper sure. All we have to do is admit we're wrong, ask Jesus for help, and we can be forgiven. That's fantastic. No matter what happens, you can be forgiven. So, every time someone asks you what you gotta know, you tell them. It's never too late to be forgiven. And that is what you gotta know. I'm Peggy Sue saying, see you later, alligator. Kids, what time is it? Yay!
Lee. Welcome back to the studio, the place where we decipher the toughest of codes. Today, we'll be deciphering the Powerverse. It should be coming in any minute now. Ah, there it is. Let's see what we have here. Hmm, time to get started on this code. You guys get to thinking. I'm gonna run it through my system. All right, looks like my system couldn't solve this one. I'm gonna need your help. Let's walk through it together. Wow, this power verse is full of codes. The Lord does not want any number one. Okay team, we know what to do here, right? Yes, it's the word anyone. Next, we have the number two. This is what we've trained for team. Tell me you know this code. Yes, it's the word two. Nailed it. Okay, now we have the letter B. We know this too. It's of course the word B. The Lord does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants every number one. Oh look, more numbers. We know this. I'll just run it through. We've done it. Time to read it all together. Stand with me and read the power verse on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. The Lord does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. Second Peter 3, 9. Wonderfully done, everyone. You are basically professionals. I knew it was the right choice to bring you all onto my coding team. Well, looks like I've got another code coming in. Until next time, this is Z. See you soon, team. Hello, my friends, Pastor Anna here. Let's pray, let's talk to God. Thank you, Lord, that you're with us and we wanna know you more. Holy Spirit, I pray you would tell this story through me today, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, my friends, thank you for being here. You might have heard this story before, but you know, Bible stories are amazing because the true what happened, right? And God can speak through them sometimes differently. It's so amazing. So, um, and this Bible story can be found in the book of Luke, chapter 23. Okay, you can look it up in the address. The verses are verses 32 through 43. All right, so in this story, we find Jesus dying on the cross, okay? Backstory is Jesus is innocent, right? We know he's innocent. He laid down his life for us. Um, Satan, our enemy, used the church leaders, unfortunately, at the time, isn't that sad? The Pharisees to get people there. And Jesus' friend betrayed him, right? So Jesus is innocent. He's dying on the cross. Beside him are two other people that are dying on the cross. And now they are guilty. They are thieves. They were dying because they had, had been, you know, made bad choices and broken the law. And that was what they did back then, you know, with the cross, killing people on the cross. So they're on either side, all right? And um, one of the thieves looks at Jesus and he starts making fun of him. And he starts making fun of him. And he says, hey, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. And Jesus, I love watching how Jesus responds in every situation, in every Bible story. He just responds, obviously, with such wisdom, such grace, such control. Because, you know, I don't know about you guys, but when somebody's pushing your buttons and trying to jeer you, sometimes it can be easy to kind of, you know, respond in a way that wouldn't be right. So Jesus, he just doesn't say anything. And that's a, that right there is just great because sometimes somebody's with their mouth, you know, we just, sometimes we just need to just not say anything and just walk away. You know, Jesus couldn't walk away at this time, but he just was wise and he just didn't say anything. He's like, just doesn't need any response. You know, there's other times where people would ask him a question to try to trap him and he would respond with a question. He was so wise in how he responded. That's something we can really learn, guys, how we respond to others, because remember, we have an enemy. People are our enemy, but Satan uses people. You know what I mean? And we have to be very, very careful just to how we respond. We want to respond the way Jesus would. So 
Jesus, um, then the other thief actually speaks up and he starts taking up for Jesus. And he's like, stop it. Don't you see? We're guilty, but he isn't. And then he spoke directly to Jesus and he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Wow. That man understood that Jesus was the Son of God. He could see it. Isn't that amazing? This man that had been thief, sinning all of his life, now he's at the end of life, but he sees. He sees that Jesus is the Son of God. And we've got these church leaders. They're the ones killing Jesus, and they can't even see. They cannot even see right in front of them the Son of God, thinking they're serving God. So deceived, right? Sometimes people are just deceived. They think they're doing good, and they're not, you know? We have to pray for them. Um, so, and here's the cool part. Jesus turned and he looked at the thief who had just given him honor. And he said, today you will be with me in paradise. Isn't that amazing? How awesome. Loving that. Wasn't it too late for that man? I mean, he had sinned all his life. Nope, never too late, guys, never too late. That man was turning from his sin, turning to Jesus. Jesus was ready to forgive him of everything because none of us can earn it, guys. None of us can earn that forgiveness. Jesus was ready to forgive him. And I have no doubt, obviously, Jesus said it. When he died that day, that's where he was. That's where he was. So pay attention. We're going to talk about that today. Never too late. Never too late. So never too late, guys. That is the title of our lesson today. What does this represent? Let me hold it up right. Time. Time. Sometimes we like things to go fast, right? Time is on our side. We're like ready for summer break to come. It's like, oh, the quicker it comes. You just want it to go real fast. Sometimes. Have you ever been late for something? I have. I've been late. I mean, I have almost missed a plane, been running down, please, and actually missed it before because they shut it because another plane wasn't ready. Oh, sometimes there's, the worst is if you're going somewhere in a traffic jam, something happens and all of a sudden a 30 minute drive is like an hour and 30 minutes. And that feeling, oh, looking at my clock, not that clock, <laughs> but that clock or the car clock, constantly looking, oh, I've been late, it's not fun. It's definitely not fun. So um, in this story today, we're not talking about that, but we're talking about would it be too late for someone to come to know Christ and go to heaven? And we learn from the story, no, it's never too late. And I love how God includes this story in his word because I'm sure that people probably would have struggled with that. I mean, can they? I mean, they're, they've been sinning for a really long time and God showed, nope never too late. And I, you know, guys, one of the favorite things that I used to do, I haven't done in a long time since I have kids just because of time. And, um, is we used to take the puppets, you know how I love puppets. I'm ventrilo ventriloquist. And, but we used to take them into the prisons and in the juvenile detention centers, which is where basically people that are younger than 18 go to jail. Okay. That break the law. And we used to go and share God's love with them. And we would um, also use the puppets. And, um, and it was super fun. And I'll tell you what, guys. Remember how we talk about we can't see God with our regular eyes, but we can sense him being near. You can feel his presence. It's Remember in the Bible, it says in God's presence is fullness of joy. It's just no place you would rather be when you, when you start to, to, to sense that. You can feel it, guys. You can. Um, well, when we would go there, I have, that is the strongest I've ever sensed God being somewhere. Like he was there. He was at that juvenile detention center. Like he cared. And a lot of times those people that are in those places, and yes, they've made a lot of bad choices. We don't even understand the lives that they had sometimes to get to that place. And Many times they just need someone to tell them about God's love and hope and that there is a way and that, yes, even them, God wants to save and pull out and make brand new and love and bring into his family. And we would share the gospel. And I'm telling you guys, 95% of the kids every time, because this in this one juvenile detention center is where they would come before they would go to court. So there was a lot of transition. It was new kids all the time. 
And 95% of them would um, be crying and receiving Christ when we shared the gospel with them. They just, they wanted that hope. And they were like that thief on the cross, just turning to him. Now there's always going to, like, there were some that weren't just like the other thief. Nope, nope, nope. And, and we pray that they'll come along sometime. But how cool is that? And I, I just share that story to be like, sometimes we look down on people and we think, oh, they're that. But let me tell you, God loves them just as much as he loves anyone. And he is reaching out his hand to them. So we all, and we want to be doing that and sharing Christ and knowing it's never too late. And for ourselves, maybe we're that, you know, maybe we're that person that continues to make bad choices and think, oh, there's no hope for me. Yes, there is. There is always hope. Always. God is always ready just to hold us in his arms, forgive us and make us his child and and or if, if we're already his child and we stumble to pick us back up and forgive us. And sometimes there's consequences and we learn from them. It's all because he loves us, all of it. So the first thing we, we can learn, though, from the thief about um, turning from sin and, and turning to God is admitting you're guilty. You know, when we have blown it, we can't just try to cover it up. We don't need to um, argue our oldest son, Ethan, whenever, whenever he was young and he would get in trouble, he would argue with me about what he did and try like a lawyer. And he would get more trouble for the arguing about what he did <laughs> than just saying, hey, yeah, mom, I blew that. Forgive me. And, and you know, he sometimes we feel like we're just saying that's meaning that we're bad. But that is no, that is good. We need to admit, repent. When we've done something wrong, oh, forgive me. I blew it. That was wrong. Um, I mean, just today I had to, I, I, I made a bad decision about something. Instead of trying to cover it up, I'm just like, you know what? That was a bad decision. I am sorry because of that decision I made. It caused something else bad to happen. And, and I took responsibility. We have to take responsibility, guys. Um, it, is, it is a good thing. So admit it. That is wrong. I am sorry. And turn from it. That's the first thing. First thing. The next thing is ask Jesus for help. And guess what? He wants to help us. He loves to help us. Okay. God, please forgive me. Help me. Help me. I'm turning to you. Help me. I, I want to I wanna be like you. I want to walk with you, God. Help me, God, please. And, um, and you see how Jesus responds. When the thief asks him for help, Jesus is like, I tell you the truth, today you'll be with me in paradise. Jesus is ready, right there ready to help him, forgive him and help him. So God hears, he cares, he wants to help us. And don't think the enemy will try to make you think, oh, you've done this five times before, he don't want to hear it again. Jesus was talking to somebody else about forgiving people. He's like, you need to forgive him seven times seven, like seven times seven. And now, I mean, he, you forgive period, all the time, all the time, just all the time. And that's how he treats us. And that's why he wants us to treat other people like that. And the next thing, and this sometimes can be the hard one, is we need to receive God's forgiveness. Okay. And, and sometimes that can be hard. You know, we could say that, but then the enemy comes in and reminds us of what we did, uh, you know, and that's called condemnation. You know, when, when the enemy's trying to beat you up on your head, for what you did wrong, which God already forgave you of, okay? And telling you that's who you are instead of something that you did. And you can respond now. You know, when you hear that, that's not God, okay? God convicts when we are in sin and will try to get us to turn from the sin and repent and come to him. Hey, that's not right. That's not who you are. That's not good. Come, come, come to me. And, and then when we forgive, he forgets. He's like, you know, so when we're talking about, I don't remember that. He chooses to, it's in the past. It's gone. It's not ever there anymore. So, and, and sometimes we feel like we can't even receive that forgiveness unless we beat ourselves up. And God doesn't want you to do that either. If you can do something to make something right, you know, if you told a lie, go tell the truth. If you can do something to make it right, do that. But God wants you to receive his forgiveness. And he says he makes all things new. You know, he makes beauty from ashes, guys. He loves you. And think about if you had a kid and they blew it. You would, and they turned to you in a genuine, that they were sorry. You're forgive, right? You want to help them get back on track. And, and, and who you guys are are children of God. That's who you are. He wants to forgive you. He wants to love on you. He wants to pick you up, help you. 
Okay. And if you haven't received the forgiveness and first, if you haven't made Jesus your Lord and Savior, God wants you to be his child and forgive you for the first time. Wash it all away, put his Holy Spirit in you and make you new on the inside. Isn't that cool? So guys, it's never too late. It's never too late for other people. It's never too late for you. Always remember that and don't look down on others and don't look down on yourself and always know you can run to God, run to him, turn from sin and run to God. Let's pray. God, I thank you that you are a good, good father. I thank you for your, your love that's beyond our understanding, God. And I pray you would help us to receive that love, God. And, and whatever sin, if there's sin in our life, pray you help us to admit it and ask for forgiveness and turn from it and turn to you. And I pray you would help us, God, to walk with you as your kids. Teach us how to walk like a dad teaches their little baby how to walk. Help us walk, God to follow you and be like you and show the world who you are and help us to treat other people that way, to give people that same love and grace and know it's never too late. And I pray, God, that you would help us to receive your forgiveness and love. Help us to receive your love. Help us. Help us, God. I pray these kids would see how valuable they are to you and not hear those lies of the enemy that tell them all the bad things. I pray all they hear is, I love you. That's what God's saying, guys. I love you, I love you. Help us, God, receive your forgiveness and love and then give it away. In Jesus' name, amen. God created everything in the universe, including you. You see, God loves you so much and wants to have a friendship with you. But there's a problem. We've all sinned. That means we've all done something wrong. Every single one of us. And that sin separates us from God. But there's good news. You and I don't have to be separated anymore. Because of God's great love for us, He sent His only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross and come back to life for us so that we can be made right with Him. All we have to do is choose to make Jesus the leader of our life. How? It's as easy as A, B, C. A, admit. Admit what you've done wrong and tell God you don't want to sin anymore. B, believe. Believe that God sent Jesus to take the punishment for your sin. Trust that you are forgiven and that you are now right with God. C, confess. Confess to others that Jesus is the leader of your life and your best friend. Choose to make Jesus the leader of your life. Get to know Him and how much He loves you and make the choice to love Him back. Well, that's our lesson for the day. I hope you enjoyed today's service. <laughs> hey, hey, wait, Pastor Tammy. Yeah? Um, Lamy got you something, and I cooked you a little snack for Mother's Day. Lying. Those look like McDonald's french fries. What do you mean you cooked me a snack today? Are you lying? Lying? <laughs> Oops. Oops. Sorry. I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, Pastor Tammy. You're right. I would. I did lie. I did buy them for you, though. Thank you. So I guess he saved up his allowance and brought me some French fries. I did. Thank you so much. I'm pretty Happy sure there's... Happy Mother's so- Day. Oh, thank you, lying. It's nice to be honest. <laughs> See you next week, Kid Life. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm going to tear these up. <laughs> Hi, boys and girls, Pastor Anna here. Hey, we want to ask you something. Would you like us to pray for you? If you have a prayer request, something you want us to agree with you to ask God for, email us at kids at lifesourcechurches.com. Send us your prayer request and we will pray for you. We love you guys and we want to pray for you. So have a great week. Please.